you might have already seen from the Discord that the DX11 rendering mode will be removed from the Wicked engine. The reason for that is that I want to significantly improve the renderer implementation that will use the bug and the DX12 capabilities to the maximum. This will result in a lot of rewrites for the graphics API, mostly simplifications and removing the DX11 backwards compatibility and just improving everything altogether in that area. Perhaps the most interesting fact that the renderer will rely on the bindless support now. And what that is, is that whenever we render every object in the scene, in the old renderer, we always need to bind every texture one by one, or just batch. You can also batch them, but you know what I mean. You have to bind every material, every texture, for every object that you render, and that's no longer the case. We will just push the objects into the renderer and Shaders can dynamically index every resource that was previously loaded with the engine with a simple integer index instead of uh, wasting CPU time on binding texture descriptors and constant buffers for every object. This bindless approach was already used by TX11 bulk and renderers, especially the ray tracing shaders, which need to access every scene resource or any scene resource by any ray from any shader. Also the object rendering shaders use the bindless, but there, was, there were some backwards compatibility considerations for the X11, things that were not easily implemented by keeping the old systems alive. These systems include mostly the packing of texture atlases that's no longer necessary with the bindless approach. So it's, we are no longer needed to pack textures into a texture atlas to index a lot of textures from one shader. We can just push a simple integer into a shader that just indexes into a texture descriptor array and then any shader can be used from any shader, essentially, without the CPU needing to bind those textures before every draw call and such. Apart from ray tracing, I experimented with implementing a visibility buffer approach that consists of Removing the G buffers like the normal G buffer, which is a full screen texture, instead only render a visibility buffer, which is consisting of a primitive ID and instance ID in the current implementation. This is essentially the same as you get from a ray tracing shader. If a ray hits uh, any geometry in the scene, you get back a primitive ID and an instance ID. So now we do the same thing from the regular object rendering shaders. So these objects no longer render the color, all the colors that you see in a normal buffer that will be used by post-processes. But behind the scenes these render also an integer-based texture that uh, stores some packed values such as primitive ID and instance ID for, for every pixel on the screen. And later any post-process that needs any surface parameter can just simply look up a pixel and then from that primitive ID uh, under that pixel, the shader can just simply retrieve the whether it's the surface normal or any surface texture or anything. Right now, besides the visibility buffer, I still render out the velocity buffer. I plan to improve upon this and the velocity buffer will also be just requested from shaders that need it. But the case of the velocity buffer is that it's frequently needed by shaders such as Ocean Blur, it's frequently accessed by Temporal Anti-Aliasing and it uh, will be a bit more uh, a burden to implement, but it's something that can be improved. Also this visibility buffer render rendering can support, for example, GPU generating anything. GPU generating anything for any pixel and then sticking it to that geometry. For example, a circle that I will be also working on, and I will show it off a bit later. Anyway, the visibility buffer rendering could also remove the need of rendering the scene with the regular format rendering shaders. With the first uh, implementation, this will not be the case. The scene will be still using a format rendering approach, but the visibility buffer rendering. But the visibility buffer that's rendered behind the scenes can be 
used on demand by any post-processing shader that requires it. So we are keeping the forward renderer because we still want that easy and neat MSA. So multi sampling and aliasing. That's just very trivial to use and direct very trivial to which is just very trivial to implement with the forward rendering approach. The other things that will be improved with this system. First, the particle systems will be renderable by any ray tracing shader, especially the grass particle systems, which is pretty inconvenient if it's not, these grass particles are not visible in the ray tracing effect. Let's uh, see this in action, for example, by enabling the ray trace shadow, the ray trace shadow effect. So as you can see now, the ray trace shadows correctly uh, have the grass particles inside them, so the grass casts correct ray trace shadows. This is not possible with uh, the implementation that's currently in the public release. Also, any other ray tracing effects, such as ray trace the ambient occlusion, that will also work correctly with the grass. So as you can see, inside those grass, dense grass, the, the darkness gets that's bigger, gets bigger, the ambient occlusion gets bigger. That was also not possible, simply because the ray tracing shaders couldn't access those uh, grass particles. So the way this is done is the grass particles also render the visibility buffer, their primitive ID and the instance transformation IDs. So they can be just sampled like any regular object in the scene. In the previous implementation, these grass particles heavily relied upon procedural generation. So only the visible particles were generated from the vertex shader, but that's no longer the case. Every grass particle is now generated and simulated, even behind the camera. This is very important to have the, for the ray tracing shaders to correctly act upon those particles. But there are still certain optimizations, such as frustum culling of the of each individual particle and then only the the frustum cut particles will be rendered for the for the main rendering scene and then performance of these particles was not degraded. They can also be seen in the ray trace reflections of course such as let's uh, label ray trace reflections on this rock for it first uh, reduce the roughness of it the normal maps increase the reflectance 200% and the enable ray trace reflections. Uh, these are quite low resolution, but maybe you can still make out the grass particles if I rotate this rock. And if I move the camera close to it, you can see in the reflections the grass particles also appear. And this is also the case with the path tracing, of course. I can just enable path tracing from here, which will be very slow, mainly because the transparent effects are really slow to render in the ray tracing. Let's just reduce the resolution even further right now, then maybe it will be usable. Okay, let's also enable the eye adaption for the scene to be brighter, especially in those dark areas. As you can see, grass is rendered with the path tracing now, which was not previously possible. You can see that grass is a, is a bit different from what it uh, is, but it looks like on the on the main uh, default render path. This is because it uh, now uses the same shaders as the rest of the objects in the scene, which is probably not not the best. Well, the grass shaders in the default render path use the kind of a simplified shader which uh, just kills the, all, the reflect, all the reflectance on its materials. So if I select the grass uh, particle system, for example this one, I can just uh, reduce the reflectance of it to zero and then um, you can no longer see those weird reflections on, on those, those grasses. So this is something that will become possible. Of course, the grass rendering is really slow with the path tracing and any ray tracing effects because because the transparency is just is just uh, 
works like that. The ray, whenever the ray encounters a transparent object, it needs, needs to sample all its textures and then continue to the, to the next object if it hits anything. So in the path tracing we limit the amount of ray tracing uh, samples uh, or ray tracing uh, ray hits, if you will. And uh, the artifact from that is that you see that grasses that reach the limit of that, they just uh, stop ray tracing and then in the alpha areas those, those black blacks will appear. This is something that you can uh, configure by recompiling the shaders. Which is pretty easily done from the editor, you can just, uh, by running the editor, just open the shader in the, the text editor, rewrite something, save, and then the editor will try to automatically recompile. Anyway, it's, it's not exposed as a user setting for now, but it could be in the future. Also, now you see that it became denoised, so perhaps find a better camera spot that can be denoised while, I speak, while I'm speaking like this. So apart from the hair particles, such as this grass, the, I plan to, perhaps in the future maybe, rewrite the, the emitted particle rendering, the particles that you can see as fire and smoke and that kind of thing, to also support ray tracing. That's uh, something that uh, will be possible with this approach. Also another ray tracing improvement is uh, for the software ray tracing rendering. So if you don't have the hardware accelerated ray hardware ray tracing GPU, such as the NVIDIA uh, RTX, then you won't be able to to use the some of the ray tracing features, such as ray traced shadows and ambient occlusion, because they is, are designed for real time performance in mind. But the path tracing is designed for like a slow offline rendering approach that you can still use without a ray tracing capable GPU. That we use the software ray tracing uh, implementation that uh, is significantly improved now by removing the need for packing all the scene textures into a texture atlas. So each texture will be just sampled as uh, the same way as uh, the hardware accelerated ray tracing path, just with mindless. So with DX11, that was not possible, and that uh, DX11 compatible system also spent a lot of time just packing uh, textures, material textures into those atlas whenever the, the scene needed to be updated. Also a problem with the texture atlas that they cannot contain block compressed texture formats within the same atlas as uncompressed textures. And in Wicked Engine you can use whatever textures, uh, simple textures you want to such as the PNG and JPEG. Those are uncompressed te texture formats. Um, if we look at them from the GPU perspective, since whenever they are rendered, they first need to be un uncompressed completely into the memory. But uh, the engine of course supports the DDX textures, which can be uh, block compressed textures. These are much more efficient to render and can contain MIP maps and other more complicated stuff like 3D textures and cube maps. So now, without needing those texture atlases, the ray tracing shaders and any of those mindless shaders will have easy, very easy access to those those block compressed textures as well. And then rendering is uh, rendering performance will be improved if you use those kind of textures. Not only the texture atlas was removed from the software ray tracing implementation, but just the way that uh, objects or triangles are indexed within the scene. We don't need to now pack every object vertex, like every vertex property from the scene into a single triangle buffer. The implementation currently can get away with only packing the positions and then any other property will be just indexable by the bindless array. Now the software ray tracing implementation will also sample the scene the same way as the hardware ray tracing implementation, which means uh, they are more unified now. It's still not the case that the ray queries are the same, have the same kind of API. Since the DXR kind of acceleration structure and ray query thing is 
very hard to implement in, in a software sh in shaders essentially. So those those are some some discrep there are some discrepancies still. If if you want to write shaders for software and hardware ray, ray tracing, these will require slightly different implementations for now. Also the software implementation of the BVH or acceleration structure is a single level and BXR will use a two-level BVH which is useful for some things. We don't uh, so the software ray tracing will not use that and it will be slightly more inefficient to, to update the acceleration structures. And the, the decals are also a thing that now support mindless fully. Decals were also packed into texture atlases with all the texture atlas downsides, but decals were also mipmapped, and the, the mipmapping for the decals was forced to be a low quality bilinear or trilinear, maybe, or maybe trilinear filter. Now decals can also support the, the anisotropic or any kind of sampler that, that the objects can use. So let's look at uh, some decals now. I go back to the default render path. Uh, Increase the resolution by a bit, and then I will place a decal to that house. Like, okay, let's place two decals actually. And if I look at it from this low angle, you can already see that decals are appearing much less blurrier than in the current uh, current engine version. And that is because they are using anisotropic filtering now. You can check this out. Uh, if you open the renderer window, you can just um, modify the global object texture quality, which is basically set up to anisotropic by default. You can downgrade it to like uh, trilinear. Let's try that. And then you can immediately see that textures are much blurrier if they are viewed from this low angle. And by using bilinear, they will be even less uh, less sharper and the nearest filtering will be the the most uh, the lowest quality this kind of looks like an old quake texture now with all this with all this blockiness you can also in just increase the blockiness uh, to check it out more like increasing the mid load bs to 2 or even further like i don't know 10 okay that's a bit too much but what it does is to arrive at uh, lower MIP levels more er earlier. So as you can see the MIP mapping works like that. You can check it out also for the bilinear. Texture will, textures will get really blurry when they approach uh, lower MIP levels. And the isotropic is also always the best quality. The decals will now be able to use the anisotropic filtering, which was not possible with the texture atlas approach, because that complicates the, the mid mapping code a lot, and uh, it requires some border border padding for textures, and that is still only compatible with the, the trilinear filtering at best. Okay, let's uh, set back the mid BS to default. Just right reset in here. The decal textures will also benefit a lot from the block compressed textures, since whenever you place a decal onto the scene, the texture will not have to be uncompressed and packed into a decal atlas, which is really convenient. Especially for the code implementation within the engine. The light maps were also improved, without uh, needing to now pack the individual object light maps into the global scene light map. The Individual object light maps can be just as easily indexed from any shader that any any other texture, and that light maps cannot use block compressed formats for now since that is not implemented. This implementation, if it happens in the future, will be uh, a more lot more simpler to add. Surfer GI will be also a new feature in the Wicked Engine, which I am currently working on in the same branch as the DX11 removal. This is a global illumination to support dynamic diffuse indirect lighting. Let's check it out in this scene. In this, you can see a sun light source casting direct lighting, so light doesn't bounce around in the scene. And the emissive object here doesn't cast any emissive light 
on the objects surrounding it. But if I enable Surfer GI now, you can immediately see the surfers get placed onto the surfaces and then they will perform path tracing on them and then they will arrive at some some nice lighting results some nice uh, indirect lighting results the downside of this is uh, that whatever the camera doesn't see is uh, not receiving surfers but once the camera saw it of course they the surfers remain there and they will keep updating themselves and then as you can see right now they have converged a nice nice lighting solution this light occlusion kind of works really nicely the emissive object casts uh, the light around it and since it's completely dynamic and can, I can also just uh, grab this bunny and uh, move it the update is a bit laggy this is something that's uh, a downside of this technique but it's kind of supports dynamic objects the skinned object is also supported so surfers that are placed in a scene stick onto the objects and it's no different with this skinned character if you enable the debug visualizer of the surfers right now it's set up to visualize the surfers with these purple dots and uh, the surfers are also sticking to the character and uh, if, I grab, if I grab the character, uh, this is the Cesium man, I can move it around the scene and it will update its lighting. And uh, okay, disable the debug visualizer now. Also, if I select it and uh, increase the emissiveness of it by the emissive color setting to, I don't know, this. And the emissive factor to 5. It will also begin illuminating the, the scene around it. And also if I grab this light, and since it's a, it's a directional light, I, it doesn't make sense to move it around. But I can rotate it, so that rotates the sun direction. And this will cause the light to be updated and with all the bounce lighting as well. So you can see the light in this case bounces pretty nicely from this wall to this, illuminating, illuminating this uh, bluish wall with uh, reddish color. And uh, you can achieve pretty nice results with it while still running the main renderer in real time. I can also just uh, give it a complete night time like this and then you only see indirect lighting in this scene. I can also disable the bloom to not be confused by it. So here you see these uh, indirect lights are bounced around in quite a neat way. And so this technique doesn't require any unwrapping of UVs like a light map would. It supports dynamic objects. Uh, so you, you have essentially just need to enable this and, and use it. This technique uh, works best with a hardware accelerated ray tracing GPU, but since the Vicod engine also has a software ray tracing implementation, uh, or rather software path tracing implementation, this one can also use that. So if you don't have a ray tracing GPU, you can still run it, but it will be slower. Like uh, the same way as the light map generation also runs on a non-ray tracing GPU, but it's a bit slower in that case. Okay, these are the upcoming features of the Wicked Engine. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, stay tuned for the next updates.